today we're speaking with Kiana Hanomont. I knew I was going to butcher that. But, uh, luckily, we are speaking with this wonderfully gracious artist um, who is joining us today uh, as part of the Zemian project. Um, uh, it's a beautifully written uh, artist statement or, or bio, which reads um, in quotes, through my life in Iran and now my identity as a Middle Eastern woman living in the United States. My work offers a commentary on socio-political issues. I create images, sculptures, and installations that illustrate my struggles related to my cultural identity and how it is perceived in my new home. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be a part of this project. Uh, as we were talking just before, um, your last name means artist and how fortuitous is that? Yeah, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> um, well, I'm, uh, I'm relatively new to your work, but I was spending some time in the sort of research leading up to, to this project. And uh, I'm just totally blown away by the, just the sheer range of, of work, that you, the, the various media that you work in and how you've ex exhibited them, the, the installation work. Um, it's, it's such a pleasure to, for me to be here <laughs> time with, uh, with new work that is new to my eyes. Um, and it is so graceful and incredibly um, just powerful uh, viewing experience. And I'm excited to someday see it installed somewhere. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much for your kind words. Oh no, it's it's uh it's such a yeah, it's such a pleasure to to spend time with the artists and the work itself. Um so we have four questions for the artists participating in these interviews. And the first one is uh what brought you to the Bay Area and sort of what are are your connections to the Swana community? Like how did you find your way into that, into the Swana community? Mm -hmm. Uh so actually uh I'm relatively new to the Bay Area. Um, I moved to the Bay Area in, um, I guess, the beginning of 2019. Oh. And uh, the thing that brought me here is actually my spouse's job. So I really okay. didn't have any connections with the Bay Area community yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, I went to school um, on the East Coast. I was in Pennsylvania for like seven or eight years. Oh, yeah maybe um and then uh, when i moved here i didn't know a single soul <laughs> so um and i joined root division as a studio artist which is a wonderful organization Excellent. and and through really it is just like people being super kind and just introducing me to other people yeah. and that's how i met people in the you know people like Shavaya, like in the um, yeah. Solana community uh, which everybody ha that I have met so far has been super uh, kind and gracious with their times to you know people come to have come to my studio giving me feedback and just just talking about different things and their experiences and that's been amazing yeah. and that's something that I've really had like especially missed last year you know, with not being able to meet new people. But with this project, I'm really excited to get to actually learn who is in the Bay Area and meeting new people, hopefully someday in person. Hopefully someday, <laughs> yes. There are, there's a sort of a loose plan that uh, Shag and I have been talking about that would, would involve a, a party for all of, like for everyone that's participated and, and anyone in the Swana community that wants to, to join us in September. But of course that's all contingent upon COVID rates and positive cases and all of the, all of the same statistics that we're all aware of and have been mindful of for the last year or so. Um, but fingers crossed that gets that, that will happen and we get to meet you in person because that would be just, Absolutely That'd be amazing. That'd be wonderful. Um, so uh, getting into this like amazing creative practice that you have, like what are what are some of the the themes in addition to your identity as a, a, a Middle Eastern woman living in the United States? Um, I understand that that might be the primary yeah. motivation, but I'm curious if there are other ideas, concerns, problems, things that you are thinking about that that work their way into your creative practice? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, every time I think about my studio practice, yeah. I feel like um, any, it's really from my, like just different experiences that and events that happen 
and have happened like throughout the years that are really affecting me. And for me, really studio is a space that um, I go to and not just necessarily like the physical space of studio, but also just the mind space of studio yeah. that I go to to kind of think about whatever that it is that I'm going through. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's to just analyze and to think about, think, think through all of these issues. And a lot of them end up, I mean, a lot of them are related to like, you know, my identity, but just like different things that I grew up with and I deal with every day. Like, I don't know, censorship is one of the things that I've worked on, surveillance, Definitely. women's rights violations, yeah. and um, kind of, uh, yeah, as you, as you mentioned in the, you know, in a, in a way, a lot of it is like related to just what it feels like to be living in this body that a lot of times feels like, you know, this forgotten, invisible body that <laughs> just trying to figure out how to how everything works, you know, like around my life. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Um, and because, and you do have such a, a, a multi, or uh, I was about to say multimedia practice, you work in a variety of media. Um, do you find that certain ideas that you're working on are better explored or expressed through, is it, if it's sculpture or um, uh, installation work, is it, are there certain media that are better for like ideas or problems that you're working on, like one versus another, or do you sort of work them out, um, work, you sort of get into them in each of them, in, in each of the media that you work in? I think, you know, the way that I've been act at least like working for the past decade has been, I think about, I try to be conscious about whenever I'm th thinking about an, uh, a project, what is the media that would be the best way yeah. to show that? Because each each media or each material even has its like historical meanings and things that comes with it. So I try to figure out, okay, well, I'm going to talk about this. Yeah. What is the best way? Like what's the best material? What's the best media? So yeah. that's yeah. what I try to like do but it's fun sometimes to like always be like learning a little bit of something but it's also challenging because yeah I always yeah. have to learn these things but this is how I end up doing just like a variety of media because I feel like that like project calls for like recently I've started doing video and I just feel like the things that I've been working on have called for like a time-based media absolutely um as a, this is a something that's come up, I think, with, uh, or at least come to mind for me in speaking with some of the Zamin project, uh, the artists who I've interviewed. Um, do you, do you get the sense that as, um, as an Iranian woman living in the United States, is there a, sort of an expectation, perhaps, an obligation that you would make work about uh, surveillance, censorship, um, the experience of being um, an uh, a woman from an othered culture, like living in the United States, do you feel it's uh, as you've as you've you know worked with or talked with others in in studio visits, for example, in that setting? Like, are there you find that there is this sort of expectation that you produce that kind of work? And um, if you were to produce something you know completely different, say like abstract painting, just as a just as a sort of idea, like randomly pulled out of the hat, like. I'm just wondering if that would be as well received um, if it, if, you know, if, if that's what you were choosing to work on as opposed to these other more like personal and politically themed subjects that you work on. How does that, how does that is that something that you've encountered? Um, I think like to some extent in school, that's something that was really, that like came up as in, oh, you should maybe work on these, but yeah, I've seen a lot of people actually have really strong opinions on both sides, yeah. both from the Iranian and the Swana community and also like actually like American community that, yeah. oh, you should or you should not. Like I've had actually very interesting, like um, heard very interesting opinions about this, that people, oh, you definitely should talk about these or you definitely should not talk about these, mm -hmm. which I find interesting. But I always feel like, as an artist, you have to be like honest with yourself and just talk about whatever that is, you know, really want to talk about. And those things really do change. You know, one day you're concerned with something and then the next day, 
you know, you know, you're about evolving and changing. Yeah. So I, I don't necessarily think you, I mean, my opinion isn't that, oh, one person should talk about it or should talk about something else. Yeah. Or like be true to yourself and what you really are concerned with. Yeah. 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 That, that makes sense. Um, it seems like there could be this, uh, and it's like, it's a double-sided sword where there's the, the want to produce the work that is, you know, resonating with you and, um, speaking directly to your experience or mirroring rather your experience. Um, but also the perhaps unspoken obligation like that there is only one thing that you as an artist from Iran can can start to address and that has to do with like a whole long list of yeah. the, the topics that are that manifest in the in the work that are engaging and extremely interesting and you know keep the audience keep the audience's minds and eyes engaged in that process um but if it's, I don't know, I guess the feeling of if it's more of an expectation rather than a, a choice that one makes, um, that could unnecessarily burden a person's uh, creative practice. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. But it sounds like you um, manage it with uh, un, un, unsurprising uh, grace, <laughs> and, and, you know, good humor about the whole thing. Um, so, a, so you're, you know, fairly new to the, fair, to the Bay Area and then 2020 happens and, and everything's down and you are at home, perhaps working in your home studio. Um, what was the last year sort of like for you? Did it, did it impact your want to be making work or were you managing to sustain that creative drive? Um, I mean, definitely, I feel like it was a roller coaster, yeah. right, last year. Um, there were times that was like, oh, okay, oh, I have all of this free time that I would be like going to openings and just just a lot of other things and then sometimes yeah, yeah. it really felt like you know you may you're making or trying to make work in a hall when you have lost access to like a lot of tools that you like already had and yeah. were making where you know I was in a few projects that I had to start working on because I was for instance using laser cutters in the maker space that closed for I didn't know for how long would be closed yeah. and uh, so I think it was just uh, there it just going back and forth between, oh, I want to do something new, or I can work on the, all of those other projects. But um, I ended up uh, kind of focusing on video, which I'm still like very new to. So it's been nice to experiment with new things and um, also some like um, kind of photography related projects. Um, so even though it was, there's definitely things that I've really missed working on. Um, I've managed to figure other things to do, but it's definitely been a very challenging, challenging time yeah. sure for like everybody, but also like from the creative perspective. And I think just like also not get, being working around other people and getting feedback and just having that casual conversation as you know in the studio and things like yeah. that. I think it's been a bit different <laughs> and challenging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I imagine that to be separated from that community that and that collegiality, so to speak, um, rather abruptly in March of last year um, could uh, could be just really jarring and potentially very isolating. But it sounds like you've managed it really well. You know, uh, not everyone I, I speaking as someone who struggled through last year with my writing practice. Um, it sounds like you manage to sort of take those hills and valleys, so to speak, as you mentioned, a roller coaster with quite a bit of um, grace, which is admirable. It didn't seem like graceful at the time though. No, I think in retrospect, we can all sort of look back and say like, oh, I actually did a fairly, you know, I did fairly well. Like, you no, know, maybe that day or that week or that month was a bit um, more challenging. But in the moment, yeah, it doesn't, when it's happening, it didn't exactly feel like, like this is me at my best. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best thing I've ever produced right here in the middle of a COVID, in the middle of the COVID, you know, uh, pandemic. Um, so Zemin Project is, is sort of built around this question of like, of resources, like what resources do we have um, that can be interpreted as like material resources, intellectual, physical, um, 
And with that like beautifully sort of open-ended question, like as that pertains to the Swana community, like, and this, will, this might be an interesting question for you because you are fairly new to the Bay Area and the Swana community. But I'm wondering like, as you've, as you've been here and sort of thinking through this notion of resources, what does that mean to you sort of as, as it relates to you and, and being in the Swana community in the Bay Area? Um, I think that's a really great question. Um, and you mentioned that, yeah, I'm new. And when I moved here, I think it was all of a sudden a really big challenge of, okay, where do I fit here? Yeah. Where like, where can I show my work? What, what resources are available? And I think the, to me, the most important thing about the Swana community is just having a group, like a group of people to, um, First of all, like on a human level, like a supportive group that you can just talk to, but also um, being able to really watch what other people are doing yeah. and learn from them, you know, be able to ask for help, help if you know, have questions about yeah. things. Um, and um, I mean, I really don't know uh, in like the sense of material resources, but in a sense of just like resources of like people supporting each other, finding yeah. uh, people to collaborate with, some people to work with and people to get feedback from, which I think as an artist, it's yeah. really important because we don't I, don't, I don't, I don't think we work in vacuums. It's always like we are consuming things and we're getting inspired and we're making things in response to it, if, if, even if we're not aware of it. Yeah. And so, and then the big work that we make is for other people, for the community as well. So. I think just having people, even though everybody's in the Swana community doesn't have the same experience, but I feel like there's just more shared experiences. So just having that type of understanding and feedback and yeah, uh, things like that are really a really important resource in my opinion. Oh, that's um, that's beautifully stated. Thank you, and it's it will be such a pleasure to you know meet you in person and properly welcome you, me, and everyone else who encounters you, like, just properly welcome you into, into the, the oh, thank you, yeah. <laughs> and wait to meet you and everybody else in person as well, yeah, no, it's going to be, when it finally happens, it will just be a, a glorious, in some cases, reunion or introduction, whatever the case might be, but it will be uh, just, I'm personally just really looking forward to it, it's going to be, whatever that happens, it's going to be fantastic, um, all right, so, We've arrived at our final question. Um, what are you thinking about these days? Like, what's topmost in your mind right now? Uh, is it like, in, are you thinking about my studio practice or um, like a specific anything project? Anything you're thinking about, like whatever that is. If it's, it could be, it can be anything. Like some people have said, like, oh, I'm thinking about uh, family and friends. I'm thinking about what it feels like to sort of re-enter society tentatively slowly as we have been so it's whatever you're thinking about yeah oh okay yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly I've been thinking a lot about how do I sustain a studio practice in the Bay Area I mean I feel like Bay Area is really hard on artists it's not an easy place to live and work so trying to figure out how do I do this long term while being able to make this work that I really want to make yeah. like I'm really interested in creating like larger installations and it's difficult to do it when you're like it needs a big space to make and also you need a space to show yeah. so kind of working towards that I've been thinking a lot about how do I make smaller things that can exist separately on their own but maybe they're a part of something bigger and yeah. um, that's been one of the things that I've been thinking a lot about yeah. recently. Yeah, understandable. I mean, and looking just at the, you know, some of the biographical information that you uh, shared with us, um, you have a, a really healthy exhibition history already. Um, that, and it's, it's not exclusive to the United States. Um, you've exhibited uh, internationally. And that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's a major accomplishment. Um, so I imagine that fingers crossed like to the to what you're talking about that you're you're thinking about like what are you know what might be the future the future of the projects the future ex exhibition opportunities like the things that will get your work out you know further into the world like it's um I think the 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 established exhibition history that you have like that bodes really well and that people are going to you know want to to see this work not just here in the Bay Area not just in the United States but um, to a wider global audience. Um, so it's, I, 
have no trouble imagining <laughs> that these oh, you know, wow, thank you. opportunities, you know, will absolutely come your way. Um, but uh, yeah, um, thank you so much. Uh, this has been such a pleasure speaking with you. And um, when the time comes, like, we'll maybe start with this handshake, but maybe there'll be a big hug in there or something, but <laughs> looking forward yeah. to meeting you in person. That would be amazing. Thank Good you time. so much for, <laughs> yeah, thank you for your time. It yeah. was so great to talk to you. Our pleasure. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for tuning in for this interview. Have a good day.